Hello, my name is Nick Walters, and I'm thrilled to present to you all, for the very first time, the July edition of the Quench Sports Fantasy Football Running Back Rankings. Let's hit off Tier 1 with my number one overall ranked player for the second year in a row, reigning as Purple Jesus and nicknamed All Day, hailing from Minnesota and ridden of all child abuse behavior, Adrian Peterson. Coming off basically a bye year, where he only played for the first game due to child abuse allegations that held him out for the remainder of the season, AP is ready to explode. In North Turner's extremely running back friendly offense, and with expectations to be more involved in the passing game this year, and to be the team's quote unquote 350 carry centerpiece, this phenom back should undoubtedly be the first overall selection in your draft. Next up at number two, we have Le'Veon Bell. No matter how looming his three-game suspension might seem, do not fret. Behind the scenes of Le'Veon's sophomore year explosion in 2014, Steelers offensive coordinator Todd Haley was the one calling the shots. And luckily for Bell's fantasy owners, Haley is a huge fan of feeding it to his six foot one, 244 pound star running back behind his monstrous offensive line and keeping the best 11 on the field at all times. Le'Veon will continue to dominate his competition and prove to the realm of fantasy football that his wild talent and usage is nothing short of phenomenal. At number three, in closing the first tier, Eddie Lacy. Lacy is a complete behemoth. As an incredible Hulk-like force out of the backfield of the league's most prolific offense in Green Bay, Lacy's upside is outrageous, especially on the goal line. The thing keeping Lacy from being higher on this list is his usage, as Mike McCarthy keeps James Starks very active out of the backfield and ways to push Lacy's physical abilities for later in the season so he will have fresh legs to the Packers' expected playoff push. Lacey has great potential, but he's a big back with asthma. He simply will not have the four-quarter usage that the previous two players are expected to have. Now that the first tier is all wrapped up, we're going to zoom through these tiers since these are so subject to change, as we have plenty of time before the season opens in September. To start off Tier 2, at number 4, I got Arian Foster, who could possibly have the highest number of touches in the league. Although injury history is frightening, he is a lethal and prominent force for that Texans offense. At number 5, I got what seems like everyone's favorite running back nowadays, Marshawn Lynch. Beast Mode is the lead back for the run prominent Seattle offense and is sure to see plenty of carries, but his offensive line did lose some after the Jimmy Graham trade by losing their best lineman, Max Unger. Lynch's high usage and back injuries through his career does scare people away, but believe me, after this past year's Super Bowl, Pete Carroll won't be wanting to pass on the goal line for a long time. At six, I got the all-time record holder for receptions in a single season by a running back, Matt Forte. But this year, Mark Trestman is out, and John Fox from Denver is in as the Bears' new head coach. Age and tread on his tires are issues for Forte, but in a newly run-dominant offense and behind a much-improved offensive line, expect a very productive year out of Forte. And to close out the second tier, Jamal Charles. Once again, I am down on Charles. He may be in the prime of his career, but he has a pitiful offensive line, with both Brandon Albert and Rodney Hudson fleeing off to different teams and leaving the, sh the Chiefs' O-line in shambles. Niall Davis is right there in the backfield with stale away carries in Andy Reid's multi-running back utilizing offense. Great talent in Jamal, but beware. To open up Tier 3, we got New Buffalo Bill, still wearing 25 and shady as ever, LeSean McCoy. Although Buffalo's offensive line is not impressive, LeSean's workload will make up for it. The Bills will run, run, and run until people get tired of seeing it, and then they'll keep on running, 
No way new head coach Rex Ryan has any comfort having Matt Castle or EJ Manuel toss the rock all game long. Next up at number 9, CJ Anderson. Gary Kubiak is coming to Denver for Baltimore. Coming with him is his famous zone blocking scheme that makes any running back look good, including Justin Forsett from 2014. Anderson fits the bill as a tough one cut back. After Ryan Clady's torn ACL, the offensive line is a huge question mark in Denver, along with Monty Ball in the backfield waiting for his opportunity to vulture away carries. But CJ is in strong position to succeed in Kubiak's scheme. At 10, we got Washington's butler, Alfred Morris. With Cowboys offensive line guru Bill Callahan setting up shop with the Redskins and drafting gargantuan Brandon Scherf at the fifth overall pick in the draft, the offensive line should be ready to get Alfred going on track to another very solid year. Rookie Matt Jones should get his touches, but Alfred is the true workhorse for Washington and figures to get all the red zone work. Next on the list at 11, Justin Forsett. The Ravens running back was nothing short of a breakout star for Baltimore in 2014. In 2015, with Mark Trestman taking place as his offensive coordinator, Forsett will get so many dump offs, you could call him the garbage man. With little competition behind him, Forsett should be the three down back in an effective offense with a top five offensive line led by Marshall Young. He's not the most talented back, but his situation situates him quite nicely. At number 12, and perhaps the biggest surprise thus far, Latavius Murray. This physical freak could be in line for a fantastic season. After being buried underneath Darren McFadden and Maurice Jones Drew most of the 2014 season, Murray broke out for a very nice end of the year. Now with offensive line upgrades and Bill Musgrave running the show, who led Adrian Peterson ex-Jaguar Fred Taylor to multiple excellent fantasy seasons, Murray is a breakout candidate. With only unforgettable draft bust Trent Richardson and career third down back Roy Hallou behind him, Murray has the potential to put up consistent running back one numbers. And to close out the third tier, the king of the 2014 season, DeMarco Murray. Now in Philadelphia with unpredictable Chip Kelly, Murray's fantasy outlook, even after a statistical explosion in 2014, could be in slight jeopardy. Even with Ryan Matthews and Darren Sproles looking to intrude with Murray's touches and the offensive line losing talented guard Evan Mathis, the Eagles offense can surely make Murray a great option in 2015. Just don't expect a historic performance like last year's 400 carry circus act. Now to start off tier four with a bang, at number 14, believe it or not, Doug Martin. Ah uh, yes, the muscle hamster. Doug is in line for a magnificent performance, and here's why. New offensive orchestrator Dirk Kenner is in town. Ketter was the man who made stocky Maurice Jones Drew the NFL rushing leader in Jacksonville. Besides the running back and offensive line wasteland he had in Atlanta last year, Ketter loves giving a workhorse running back the ball over and over again until the defense just can't handle it any longer. Now, Doug has shed weight and has had the best offseason of his three-year career. The Bucks have upgraded their offensive line to the draft and drafted first overall pick quarterback Jameis Winston to help keep defenses honest. Tampa has assured people that Doug is their man. Charles Sims is at most a third down back, while Bobby Rainey is just a change of pace running back who will rarely see the field. Doug is the centerpiece of that offense and can have a superb year. He is the best value pick in this year's draft. From a high riser to a low faller, at 15 we got Jeremy Hill. Hill broke out last year and never looked back, but this year look for an offense with a healthy AJ Green, Tyler Eifert, Marvin Jones, and Mohamed Sanu to look to pass more often, while Giovanni Bernard will take away explosive touches and receptions from Hill. Sure, goal line potential will no doubt be there, but it looks as if Hill's upside is capped this year. Next up, we're heading to the desert 
at number 16 for Andre Ellington. Last year's injury-riddled season was not a true testament to Ellington's immense talent. With the additions of first-rounder DJ Humphreys and X-49er Mikey Potty, the offensive line is looking at tip-top shape. Carson Palmer has recovered well from ACL surgery, and Ellington himself is at the best health he's been since being a Cardinal. The Cardinals did draft running back David Johnson, but Johnson has similar skill sets to Ellington, and Bruce Arians has told media that number 38 centerpiece role will be unaffected. At 17, from the Big Easy, Mark Ingram. Earlier this offseason, you could have made an argument for the ex-Heisman Trophy winner to be a running back one. Yeah, not so much. CJ Spiller was signed on and has been making incredible strides in camp. Spiller should steal away precious outside carries and receiving opportunities in a high-powered, pass-lenient offense. Those touches are precious. Still, Ingram is a fantastic running back too, but just too pricey for my taste. At 18, in San Francisco, we got a sophomore running back ready to make the leap, Carlos Hyde. Out of Ohio State, Hyde is a splendid replacement for longtime 49er great Frank Gore. Even behind a slightly depleted offensive line without Yapati and Anthony Davis retiring, Hyde has a great opportunity to be a success besides Colin Kaepernick running the read option, opening up holes for Hyde. Reggie Bush does figure to take away some passing downs, but Hyde is the best option the Niners have for what they've always loved to do, pound the rock. To wrap up the fourth tier, at number 19, as he was recently just mentioned, Frank Gore. This is a tricky one. We have seen Gore regress greatly and dive off as his age of 33 has caught up to him. Even with a formerly great offensive line in San Francisco, but now the lead back in the Colts' prolific offensive scheme, Gore figures to see plenty of goal line opportunities. This is great news for Gore, but beware. Age, injury, and overall ineffectiveness has made Gore lackluster at best in recent years. Maybe a Colts team with no Trent Richardson or a Maude Bradshaw could rejuvenate his career, but have limited expectations as young backs behind him could still threaten his position. Passing downs could be unfriendly toward Frank, and the Colts offensive line is still not a proven, effective unit. Now, as the fifth tier opens, it's time for rapid fire. Do not fret. Come the August rankings, more insight will be given. At 20, in an offense coordinated by head coach Joe Philbin, with recently drafted quickster running back Jay Ajay in a shabby offensive line, Lamar Miller. At 21, with outrageous upside and ceiling, with the best run blocking line in football, Joseph Randall. We'll see if Randall can beat out number 22 on our list, Darren McFadden. Both are high on this list, because no matter what committee talks there may be, the leader of that Cowboys running game will be in line for a massive season for offensive mastermind Scott Linehan, a la 2014 DeMarco Murray. It may seem like Randall has the inside track for the starting job, but McFadden is already gaining rave reviews from camp and looking like his true self. Watch out and stay tuned to that backfield. At 23, LeGarrette Blunt, Big back in a big offense with big O-line. Belichick is never fantasy friendly, but with Vereen and Ridley out of the picture, Blunt could actually be the one true and only guy in New England. Maybe. Perhaps. Worth a shot in your drafts if the price is right. Next up at 24, Todd Gurley. This man is a star in the making. Keywords in the making, just not yet. His ACL recovery, mediocre offensive line, and excellent second option, Trey Mason, will allow the Rams to ease their first round investment into the groove of things. At 25, we have TJ Yeldon. Any possible three down back has value, and even in the Jaguars offense, Yeldon could be the man. Gerhardt and Denard Robinson may have something to say about that, so stay tuned to the news out of Jags training camp. 
at 26, and to commence the sixth tier, we got CJ Spiller. A very strong option out of a backfield that will be sure to utilize him in the passing game. 27, Joyke Bell. Joyke slid big time due to the competition he has in Detroit with number 28 on our list, Amir Abdullah, rookie out of Nebraska, who is sure to cut into Joyke's running total. As long as both of them are healthy, Detroit's run game could be a timeshare, such as years past. At 29, in a high upside sleeper, Chris Ivory. Ivory has a chance to be a lead back for the Jets, barring ACL recovering, usually fumbling Stevon Ridley, cutting into his production. At 30 and 31 respectively, Tevin Coleman and Devontae Freeman. The Atlanta job is up for grabs in the more balanced attack. The lead back is all of a sudden very fantasy relevant. Either is worth a flyer at a cheap price in the draft. At 32, a poor man CJ Spiller in Cincinnati, Giovanni Bernard. His explosiveness is unquestionable, so he could still be highlighted in Cincinnati's offense. Here at 33, we have Trey Mason. Todd Gurley's ACL could be unpredictable this season, and Trey Mason could end up being a steal. Great late round sleeper. Next at 34, 35, and 36, we have the most competitive training camp position battle, Cleveland's running back. We got Duke Johnson, Isaiah Crowell, and Terrence West, respectively. Whoever wins this job will be running often behind one of the league's most underrated offensive lines and will have great success on the field and on your team. My favorite at this point is rookie from Miami, Duke Johnson, but stay tuned. 37, we got Ryan Matthews. Backup running back for Philadelphia? Well, he'll still get his carries. But if injury-prone DeMarco Murray goes down, Ryan Matthews is a fantasy animal. Stash him on your bench, regardless if he's your handcuff for DeMarco or not. Similarly, Charles Sims at 38 is the same tale. If Doug Martin goes down, Sims is the guy and will lead Tampa with carries, no questions asked. And to wrap up our list at 39 and 40 respectively, Shane Vereen and Rashad Jennings. The high-powered pass-happy offense for the Giants will allow for a successful running back, especially receiving specialist Vereen. Jennings hopes to be the man on first and second down, but Andre Williams on the goal line could be a concern. Well, that's our list. And with that, I'm sure you have your disagreements, questions, comments, and etc. I'm always up for feedback, so comment below or contact me on Twitter at Nick G. Walters. Go ahead and check out the other preliminary rankings, all in the description below. Keep up with my Twitter for the best fantasy advice and analysis out there. My name's Nick Walters. Thanks for watching. I wish you the best of luck in your fantasy endeavors, and as always, quench on.